name is David Fitzgerald and I'm a field service engineer with United Conveyor Corporation. Today we're going to demonstrate how to install a Nubeloid and Nubeloid pipe connection. Before we get started, I'd like to point out this is an instructional video. It is only intended to be used as a training aid. This video is not intended to be a replacement for the instructions found in UCC Form 91140. Proper installation of a Nubeloid pipe connection coupling is important in any installation to prevent leakage through the coupling and to ensure proper pipe alignment. Improper installation of new light pipe connection can cause air leakage through the joint leading to conveying capacity problems, accelerated wear of components. These problems can cause unforeseen downtime, increased maintenance costs, and negatively affect the overall system performance. Before we start, we'll need to make sure we have the correct tools. We will need hand wrenches, a hammer, and a torque wrench. Some of the torques can be extremely high, so it's a good idea to also have a torque multiplier. Depending on the size and location of the connections, lifting equipment may also be necessary for the installation. It is also important to follow all safety policies instituted by your plant. Remember to always use the appropriate safety equipment such as hard hat, steel-toed safety shoes, and eye protection. Gloves may not be required, but are a good idea to protect your hands. Before we begin, we'll need to shut down and lock out the system we'll be working on. The first step is going to be installing the locking flange clamp. The Nubeloid pipe is a spiral cast pipe. The outside diameters of the pipe can vary up to an eighth of an inch. Sometimes you might have a problem getting the locking flange clamp on, and you may need to use a wedge or a spreader in the top gap so you can open the clamp up far enough to go onto the pipe. Our next step will be to install the gaskets. When you install the gaskets, you want to make sure the narrow end of the taper is pointed towards the flange. And the gaskets should fit tightly over the pipe. If you have a higher temperature application, your connection kit might have a different gasket. It might include a white braided rope gasket. To install the gasket, you want to wrap the gasket around the piping, ensuring both of the beveled edges touch. The gaskets tend to be a little bit long, so you might have to trim down the ends to make a nice tight seal. Right? Also, when you're installing the gasket, you want to make sure that the cut of the gasket itself is approximately 90 degrees from the top of the flange plant. The next step is going to be slide the aligning ring over the end of the pipe. You want to slide the aligning ring on until the pins and the aligning ring come up against the pipe itself. The purpose of the pins in the aligning ring are so you can remove the pins using a quarter 20 nut and slide the aligning ring back over your pipe so you can remove a section of pipe for repair in place. The next step is to install the locking bolt. The purpose of the locking bolts is to tighten the flange clamp to the outside of the piping. After you install the locking bolts, we want to snug the bolts up, but we don't want to tighten. Before we snug the locking bolts, we want to make sure that we install the inserts in over the top of the gasket. The purpose of the insert is so the gaskets aren't pinched while you're tightening your flange clamp. When you're installing the insert, you want to make sure the bevel edge of the insert is facing up. Okay, now I'm going to snug the top bolt. The next step is to install the cross bolts. Cross bolts come in two different lengths. A longer cross bolt is meant for the top of the flange, where the flange is thicker. The rest of the smaller cross bolts are going to be to fill in the rest of the holes in the flange. When tightening the cross bolts, you want to make sure you use a cross torque pattern to make sure you have proper flange alignment. Due to the difference in gasket material and flange sizes, you need to refer to UCC instruction 91140 for the proper torques. 
The torque specifications called out in the instruction are for dry torques only. If you're using anti-seize or any other form of lubricant, you want to reduce the torque values in our specification tables by 45%. The next step is to tighten the locking bolt. On this particular pipe size, the locking bolt torque is going to be 500 foot-pounds. That's where a torque multiplier is going to come in. Once your locking bolt is at the proper torque, you want to wrap the head of the bolt with a hammer. This is going to free up any localized tension in the clamp. Right. Once you free up the localized tension, your torque on your bolt might be a little bit off, so you want to retorque the bolt to 500 foot-pounds. Continue hitting with the hammer and retorquing until you can maintain the 500 foot-pound torque. Now that the Nubaloy pipe connection coupling is properly installed, we will need to restore the system and begin a system test. Once normal operating temperatures are restored, we can check and retorque the connection and monitor the system for leaks. Proper installation of Nuvoloid pipe coupling will reduce maintenance costs and costly system downtime. For more information on Nuvoloid pipe couplings and other UCC products or parts, contact your local sales representative or visit our website at www.unitedconveyor.com. Thank you for watching.